CPL Newsroom presented by Volkswagen. Once again, I'm Charlie O'Connor Clark alongside, am I pointing the right way this time? Yes, Mitchell Tierney uh, to my, I guess, left, if you're looking on the screen. Again, disregard this if you're listening to the podcast. Anyway, you are back in our 2024 Canadian Premier League season previews as we come to the fourth, uh, sorry, fifth club that we've gotten to. uh, And that is York United Football Club, who again, obviously finished fifth last year getting into the playoffs in just the last two weeks of the season uh, and then going out to Pacific and playing a very very hard fought fourth versus fifth game that they unfortunately for them lost in the last minute of that game you know Paris G bicycle kick notwithstanding (laughs) Um, again you guys should know the drill by now hopefully if you've uh, listened or watched to listen to or watched any of our other season previews 10 minutes are on the clock Uh, Mitchell Tierney question number one for York United simple can they find more consistency in 2024 yeah i mean that was their their big issue i think this past season is they had some incredible highs um you know early on in the year they went on a a run and got all the way up to to second place i think it was five in a row um and and were absolutely cruising and then you know they go and can't score and lose a bunch and dip below that playoff line then the end of the year they're able to to pull it out kind of at the last second and um, grab you know that fifth and final playoff spot so I think this year they'll really want to um, in every kind of facet of the club have more consistency I think it obviously helps it's no secret uh, last year it was a bit you know unstable with not knowing exactly what was next with the ownership group and I think everything else bleeds down from there um, you know all those potential distractions and uncertainties are are gone and um yeah with game plan sports coming in and and being such an exciting ownership group for for you know york united i think that a lot of the questions are answered and now um they kind of have that platform a little bit more to to go on and you know just be maybe a little bit more consistent in in 2024 yeah that's huge that's certainty there's just a lot more i think positivity around the club in general going into this year you know players feel a little bit more uh sure of, of themselves and, and of their place there i mean again the another reason that the consistency wasn't there at times last year was just the starting 11 was never consistent there were yeah. so many injuries with this club and there were suspensions and just absences there were only five players for york that started 20 or more games for this team last year that is that is not a lot for a for a manager to deal with when he's trying to build a an identity of football and have some kind of consistency so Again, I think that really will be the the number one thing. Although there are there's quite a bit of turnover in the squad for York this year, there are quite a few new faces. There are foundations in place for this team, and I think it'll just help if they get a little bit more luck from the injury gods. So uh, anyway, moving on to question number two for York United is, speaking of some of those absences or, or those uh, departures, do they have enough goals in this team, Mitchell, with Osasa de Rosario and Kevin Dos Santos gone? Both of those guys with six goals for this club last year. So that's 12 of the, the 35 total that they scored. Um, again, simple. Do they Have they done enough, you think, to replace that? I think they do, but they're going to need it very much by committee. Um, you know, by all accounts, Austin Ricci has had an unbelievable preseason. I've seen clips of him scoring from the halfway line, which uh, always indicates a, a player in confidence. Um, and, and I do think, you know, there's certainly players – on their squad that will want to have bounce back seasons. You know, Brian Wright missed the most big chances in the CPL last season with 15, had eight expected goals, scored just two actual goals. Um, I think Moba Bully was a little bit below his standards as well in terms of goal scoring. So there's guys there who can who can score. The big question, though, is I don't think that there's a guy in this roster maybe who is going to hit double digits this year the way um, Di Rosario was able to do in, in 2022. So, um, yeah, they're going to need a few different guys to kind of carry the goal scoring over the the course of the season. I think, again, that exists internally, that exists with guys like uh, Dennis Selinovic coming in, um, you know, an exciting player as well. But uh, there isn't maybe that go-to guy that there has been in other years, and uh, that's a big question mark. It is, it is. And I think it's, like, it's, it's still a little bit tough to – guess how exactly they're going to put this attack together uh again as you, as you mentioned you know, austin ricci has from all we've heard been incredible in in preseason so far and it seems like he might be in pole position to start for this club as a number nine when he might have played as as a winger a little bit more often last season so it'll be interesting to see if he can 
come in and, and have maybe that that breakout season that I think a lot of us know he's capable of in this league. He's one of the most explosive and dynamic players up front when he's healthy and informed. So I think that'll be uh, interesting to watch for York. And, and there are a lot of options on the wings. Clement Baia, obviously. Max Ferrari's taken a lot of reps at fullback, I think, in preseason, but he also is an option in the attack. Um, again, as, as you mentioned, there are a lot of options in this group and, and guys who can provide goals and, and attacking impetus but they do need probably somebody to take that opportunity and, and take it by the scarf of the neck and be like i'm going to score 10 or even eight goals this year because they had three guys with six last year and two of them are gone so that is going to be uh maybe something to focus on question three moving to the back of the pitch again for york uh can they improve defensively you know they they gave up 44 goals last year that was quite a lot and there were some games some of the games they lost they lost heavily i think they gave up four to pacific twice uh there were a few i think they gave up three to valor at home at one point uh they need to to stop some of those some of those leaks mitch do they do you think that there is you know an improvement in this squad in the defensive end yeah i think that's the that's even the bigger question right like even even if they didn't have maybe that consistency offensively last season Overall, you know, they were pretty solid. They created a lot of chances. They scored a decent amount of goals. Defensively, they really struggled. I mean, like you said, second most goals allowed. They had a minus nine goal differential. And they allowed um, the most shots on target in, in the entire league, um, which obviously, you know, is not none of that's a recipe for long term success. Um, and that's something they really look to address this offseason. I mean, when you talk about injuries, the back line was really the the area where it was most consistent. I mean, I still remember, you know, the opening day of the season, they have two fullbacks starting at center back or, yeah. or at least a defensive midfielder in, in Brem Samaro and, and fullback Jonathan Grant. And we saw Paris G play center back for a lot of last year. I mean, it just wasn't ideal. So they went in and, and brought in guys like Oswaldo Leon, you know, Frank Sturing as well. Uh, Noah Batney came in late last season. So there's just more there in terms of consistency. And um, yeah, that was the main thing they looked to address this offseason, and I think they did a quite solid job of doing so. Yeah, just to, to spell it out, departures in the back line, Paris G, Tas Mordekudis, Jonathan Grant, and obviously club captain Roger Thompson, who's retired. They've brought in you know Juan Cordova, who's an experienced fullback. He'll probably probably play right back a very like a lot for this team. Orlando Botello was one of the players they brought in on loan from Monterey, Frank Stirring has played for the Canadian national team, you know, in world cup qualifying, I think. And scored. Uh, and, and scored in what is 11 nil against uh, <laughs> what was that? St. Vincent and the Grenadines. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and as well to Leon, as, as you mentioned, who again is, is a player who has significant experience. I think he's played a lot of games in the Mexican second tier to a very good level. So there is a lot of quality in that group. It is largely a new group, which sometimes takes some time to come together. Uh, but I think there is the the talent in there. But the other thing to mention with York is in goal, they brought in Thomas Vincenzini, uh, who is an experienced French goalkeeper who I think will probably work alongside Elia Himaras, uh, filling the shoes of Nico Giansopoulos. But again, that's a, an experienced player who maybe is something that can help them mesh uh, a younger and, and more you know unfamiliar with each other backline together, especially earlier in the season. So interesting to see how that works out. Question number four for York United, which of the, you know, many new signings that we've already mentioned, do you think is going to have the biggest impact for this club in 2024? I think, uh, I think for me, I'll go Juan Cordova. I, I mean, you know, I think he has the potential to be the best fullback in, in the Canadian Premier League this season, full stop, given the, the level he's come from um, playing consistently in the Chilean league. And for some of the top teams over the past few seasons, you know, he's gotten um, a few looks at the Canadian men's national team. He's really motivated to get back uh, to the Canadian men's national team as well. And knows only, you know, an absolutely outstanding season with York United probably gets him uh, back in, in that picture, uh, especially ahead of, you know, Copa America, uh, this summer, where he could be a real asset to to Canada, if uh, you know, given his his experience in playing again against Chile, uh, or mm -hmm. you know, against Chilean opposition in Chile, um, which Canada will obviously do. But yeah, no, I think uh, I think he's an exciting player and, and one that I'm really looking forward to seeing how he slots in. I'm going to use this opportunity to talk about Denis Salanovic just because I think he's really cool, <laughs> and it's always it's always awesome to have a guy from Liechtenstein uh, in 
you know, football club you're watching. Uh, shout out Nico Hassler as well. I'm sure of a friend of Dennis. But anyway, this guy has probably inarguably the best resume of opponents of anybody in the Canadian Premier League. I mean, this guy has a lot of caps for the Liechtenstein nationally. So he's played against like Cristiano Ronaldo's Portugal. He's played against Spain. He's played against Italy, Switzerland, I'm like Sweden, Russia. I'm just reading it down here. There's so like he's played against Denmark. He's played against pretty much every major European national team uh, for his country uh, in big games, in World Cup qualifiers, in Euro qualifiers, in Nations League. This is a guy with a lot of experience uh, who I think will will bring a lot to this York team. And he seems like a fun player. You know, he's a he's a tricky player who can play on the wing. He's going to add, again, a little bit of a different dynamic to that attacking setup. So he's a player that I'm very, very excited to see play. And I think we're gonna have to need we're gonna need some uh, stoppage time here because my alarm is about to go off and we have one more question. That's okay though. Two, one. Oh boy. <laughs> Deepest apologies, but yeah, we'll get a, we'll get a minute or two of added time here que because we have to hit question number five. Mitchell, what does success look like for York United FC in 2024? Yeah, I'll be. Uh... I'll, I'll be quick with this again. I think it's getting back to the playoffs and and winning a playoff game. I know ownership has kind of higher highest standards, and I actually think that'll push this group, you know, above and beyond this season. But yeah, I think just you know hosting and I think hosting first and foremost, and then hopefully winning a playoff match would be huge for them. Yeah, uh, this is a club that's never hosted a playoff match in its history. They've played in two, uh, one at Forge, one at Pacific. Lost them both, unfortunately for them. Uh, they would like to. Be in the top four this year and that kind of goes hand in hand with something else that i think is maybe a kind of secondary goal is just to be better at home this year i think they had yeah just just 14 of their 38 points at york lions stadium last year they were not pleased with how often teams would come into that stadium and beat them uh, so i think they'll have quite some focus on making that a little bit more of a of a fortress for them this year and then naturally that might lead to playing a playoff game there which if that is the case, we'll set them up a little bit better for success in the playoffs. Anyway, thank you very, very much for sticking with us for five of these CPL season previews as we prepare for the season to kick off on April 13th. We will be back tomorrow with uh, who's number six, Atletico Ottawa, um, which will be a fun one, which we may also need some uh, some stoppage time for because I'm sure there's a lot to talk about there. Anyway, thank you very, very much for joining us and we will see you next time.